I'm talking about just multiplying two numbers only. Only two numbers. Then we'll expand on that after that. Here is the rule for them. If the two numbers have the same sign, The result is what? The answer will be positive. We don't care which one is bigger or smaller. If the numbers have different signs, if the two numbers have different signs, the answer will be negative. That's it. So same sign, the result is positive. Different signs, the result is negative. And that's the only rule we have to worry about. That's it. And this rule actually is used for multiplying and dividing. So let's take some examples. This is just multiplication today. What's a negative 2 times a negative 1? Are these numbers the same sign or different signs? Same. same. So the answer is going to be positive. You multiply the absolute values. 2 times 1? 2. Now, we never write plus 2. We always say what? 2. Five times a negative 10. Are they the same sign or different signs? Different, the result is negative. Five times 10, 50. Did I say 10 or two when I did? Negative five, it's all right, times two. Same sign or different signs? Different. The result is negative. Again, notice I don't pay attention which one's bigger, which one's smaller. In multiplication, that is not important. Same sign, the answer is positive. Different signs, the answer is negative. Don't worry. What about this one? Negative 7 squared. What does that mean? Yes, negative 7 times a negative 7. Are they the same sign? Yes, the result is positive 49. What's a negative 1 squared? Negative 1 times a negative 1, same sign. The result is positive 1. What's a negative 1 squared? Uh-oh. Notice how I wrote that one. Only the 1 is being squared, not the minus sign. So this one is the whole thing, the negative 1 squared. This is just the 1. So there's the minus sign. Let's put it in the front. And what's 1 squared? It's 1 times 1, so you end up with negative 1. And if you have a calculator that's halfway decent, and you type that, there we go. Uh, where's negative one on this? Negative one. I don't know if this is, what kind of calculator is this? But let me square it. Does that look like negative one squared? It should give me a negative one if that's a decent calculator. It is negative one. But if I write parentheses, negative one, and square it, that should give me a positive one because that's a negative one times a negative one. And notice that's a one. So there is a difference between them when you use parentheses versus no parentheses. Here, only the one squared, here the negative one squared. I cannot use uh, decimals or um, fractions, you know. These fractions are going to keep coming.
I'll go on the next page. What is two and one fifth times negative five? Again, this will be what, positive or negative? negative? Negative, different signs. And let's go to the side and multiply these two. So let me go to the side, two and one fifth times the five. I can change them to improper fraction. Five times two, 10 and one, 11 over five times what? Five over one. <coughs> Notice the fives will cancel. 11 times one, 11. One times one is one, so the answer is what? Negative 11. Negative one and one third times negative one fifth. Same sign or different signs? Same, sign. Same. the result is what? Positive. So let's go to the side. One and one third times one fifth. Notice I'm multiplying the absolute values. Three times one, three and one, that's four over three times one over five. Four times one is four. Three times five is 15. So what's my answer? And notice I never write the plus, so it's four fifteen. Negative 1.4 times a negative 0.6. Positive or negative? Positive. So let's go to the side. 1.4.6. Multiply the number just like you don't see the decimal points. 6 times 4. 24. 6 times 1. 6 and 2, 8. You got to move the decimal point how many places? Two, two places. That's 0.84 or 0 0.84. Now let's assume we have a multiple numbers, not just two. We have a stack of them. So how do we multiply a stack of them? When I say stack, I don't mean really stack, like 10 of them. I'll, I'll do, I'll, well, I can do a stack of them, but I'll start with three numbers first. Now we can do two at a time. Let's look at this. Positive times a negative. Same or different signs? The result is what? Negative 16 times negative three. Are they the same sign or different signs? Same, that's positive 48. Five times negative two times negative one times three times a negative two. Take all the negative numbers? No, because you're multiplying. No, you're multiplying. Yeah. Can't. Five times a negative two. Negative ten. A 
let's copy the rest of the problem. <coughs> let's do these two. Same sign. Same sign will give you what? Positive 10. Ten times three, thirty times a negative two. Different signs, that's a negative sixty. Notice a quicker way to get to the answer is you count how many minus signs or negative signs you see there. Here's zero, one, two, right? That's an even number. If you have an even number of negative sign, the result is going to be what? Positive. How many minus numbers or negative numbers do we see here? One, two, three. Three negative numbers. That's an odd number. Odd numbers will always give you what? Negative answer. That's why your answer is negative, your answer is positive. And if you think about multiplying two numbers, if they have the same sign, you have an even number of negative signs. That's a plus. And if they have a different signs, you have an odd number of negative signs. That's negative. So some people will do them that way. They go, I'm not going to multiply these numbers. I know what the answer is going to be. So they see... negative 5 times negative 2 times a 1 times a 3 times a negative 2. How many negative numbers do you see there? 3. That's odd, right? So your answer is going to be negative. Let's just multiply the numbers. The absolute value. What's 5 times 2? 10. 10 times 1? 10. 10 times 3? 30. 30 times 2? 60. Or I might give you one like this. What's the answer? Don't even waste your time. Look what you see at the last number. What is it? Zero times anything is what? Zero. So you can waste your time multiplying the numbers. Go ahead. Once one of the numbers is zero, you're done. Your answer is zero. I'll try another example. Four over five times negative eight over nine times one over three. Again, positive or negative. How many negative numbers do we have there? One, that's an odd. That's a negative. And let's go to the side and multiply them. 4 over 5, 8 over 9, I just take the absolute value, and 1 over 3. Can I simplify anything? No. So what's 4 times 8? 32. What's 5 times 9? 45 times 3, 135. And you can't simplify it. Ten times negative one half times a negative one. How many negative numbers do you see there? Two, that's even. Your answer is going to be what? Positive. Ten, that's ten over one. 
times 1 over 2 times 1, or 1 over 1. I already covered the minus sign. I know my answer is going to be positive. By 2, this is 1. By 2, this is 5. 5 times 1 times 1 is 5 over 1, which is 5. So that's the end of section 7.4.